Hello and welcome to Discover Dorico for February. Um, so while we just, uh, everybody's starting to join, welcome to people from around the world and some first time joiners. Um, I'll chat for a minute just so you can all check audio and settings and that kind of thing and let me know if there's any problems. Uh, if you miss this session live, then uh, you might want to subscribe to the Dorico channel and ring my bell, um, by which I mean the YouTube notification bell. If you subscribe and then click on the little bell icon, and then you'll be notified uh, when we upload a new video. Um, also, after this session, not now, after this session, um, check out the blog, um, blog.dorico.com. Um, and there's a new uh, post just gone up there today about the piano, uh, the film, but they did a live version with the London Contemporary Orchestra and uh, how that was done in Dorico. So don't check it out now. Check it out after the session. Um, so today I've been sent some files um, by by a few people. So thank you for those um, uh, because they were uh, they were things that had come up in social media or questions or from support. Um, and I thought actually they were worth looking at because they're a bit I don't know they can be a bit meatier or there's more options than can easily be shown in a short video. Maybe one of Anthony's videos. So it was worth uh, looking at in one of these sessions. So today I'm going to look at some uh, drum parts, but they're kind of jazz drum parts. So uh, I'm not doing kind of standard drum note input type stuff today. It's more kind of the jazz drum parts, which are showing uh, cues and hits and that kind of thing. Um, you see at the bottom of the screen down here, um, there's a, a little example, which I'll, I'll start to duplicate that. And then we'll look at a few other options and things you can do instead or as well. Um, I'm also going to look at uh, a percussion labeling um, option that somebody wanted to, to do, which isn't initially obvious. And when I asked a few people, so what would you like as a kind of a standard for this? I got various answers back from different people. So I'll look at some options around those for percussion labeling uh, of instruments in a score and on the parts. Uh, and also uh, I've been sent a, a layout question file uh, in engraved mode. It sounded simple. It was, how do I delete page three? And kind of from page three onwards, sounds simple, but uh, we'll need to look at that. So to start off with, let's do um, Stanley's jazz drum part. Um, because I've got it on the screen. Uh, so to start off with, um, I'm going to basically duplicate this section at the bottom. Um, but of course, initially in our drum kit in Dorico, we don't have these slashes and we don't have these notes up here either. Um, so we need to start there. Now, yes, you could do the slashes like this, which is a, a slash region. Um, we'll come on to the slash region a bit later. Um, the reason I'm not going to start with those is that a slash region would cover up anything else. So I couldn't add these these uh, initial notes. So let's start with this one as to what we do here. So as I said, if I start the carrot here, um, when you move up and down, you'll see, for example, I've got a snare drum and I've got floor tom. So I can add a snare drum note and I can add a floor tom note. I'm just pressing Y, which is the default input. And I'm pressing up and down with the arrows to get those. But I don't have that center line for slashes. Um, so you can't even enter a note and then change the note head type as you might in some other software. So I'm going to delete those. What you need to do to start off with is go to setup mode over here. And we need to edit our drum set. So I'm going to expand this one. Uh, and expand this drum kit. And I haven't checked, but I think everything that we're going to do for this jazz stuff is available in Pro and Elements. Let me know if there's anything that you can't do in Elements, but I think uh, all of this should be available in both programs. Um, so I'm going to edit percussion kit here. And these, this is the the, the drum uh, percussion. So if you haven't watched any of our other videos on, on how drum kits are set up in Dorico, then you might want to. Um, because I'm kind of going on from there in this uh, in this video. Um, this is so this is your standard drum kit. So very quickly, your hi hat up here, for example. If I edit percussion playing techniques, you can see it has a, uh, a X note head. I'll delete that one. It's not meant to be there because I might want to add that later. So you have an X note head by default, which is why your hi hats get that by default, and they by default stems up. The snare drum in here. It also uh, stems up in this case, although normally in Dorico it stems down by default. And uh, you know, you've got your kick drum here and your hi-hat here. So what we want to do is add a slash. So we've got two buttons here for slashes. I'm going to add here um, a, a slash without stems. Um, and I'm also going to need a note up here. Um, now, I'm, the only reason I'm doing that is because the, the example file I sent had a note up there. In some cases, they actually use a 
uh, the hi hat kind of the if we think of it as a treble clef, they use the G space. This one isn't; it's using a much higher one. So I'm going to add a new instrument. I could use one of the existing ones and move it, but I'm going to add a new one. So I'm just going to add another ride symbol uh, because it seemed like a sensible high thing to do. And that ride symbol I'm going to put up there. It will call it two because I've already got one down here, but that's fine. So it's in the right place in the drum kit, so I can press apply. I also want it to, when I uh, click on edit percussion playing techniques, you'll see that also has an X note head by default, and I don't want that. I want a standard note head if I'm copying this example exactly. So I'm going to change this to the default note heads. So now that ride symbol has a default note head. Press OK. Uh, press close. So now in my drum kit, I'll go back to right mode. Here, I now have a slash SL, it says. So if I enter a note there, I'll get a, uh, a, a slash. So let's turn, we'll turn those sounds off in a bit as well. But by default, it's saying I'm a woodblock because that's, I think, the lowest thing in the XG kit. And it's not assigned to anything else. So it's gone. I'm just going for the first thing I found and it's a woodblock. Maybe that's useful in some cases. Maybe it isn't. So I'll, I'll look at remo removing that shortly. Um, so I'm going to enter some of these. Now, of course, you can keep entering them, or you can just select the bar and press R. Uh, it's if you to re repeat them. I said I'm not at the moment doing a slash region uh, because I'm not going to add some other things to this as well. So in here, if I was to copy this uh, drum part, if I double click in here, so I've got my rhythm grid. I can decide where I'm going to be in this rhythm grid. I can move up and down, and I can move all the way up now to this R symbol two, the ride two symbol that I've added. So if I added a note for the standard uh, ride symbol here, uh, then what I would get is a, an X note head. But if I um, uh, if I just move this note, if I press Alt up, then I can move it to the, uh, no, I can't, uh, so I'm not editing. If I press Alt up, I can move it to the other instruments. I can move it up to the hi-hat, I can move it up to crash symbol, I can move it up to ride symbol two, which is where I want to be. So now let's enter some more notes here. So I'm on the right instrument here. I'm just going to press Y. Uh, press, uh, so I'll do space bar. Let's copy that rhythm that's at the bottom there. Uh, you see, I've got a, um, a tide note here. Uh, what you call that note depends on which country you're in, but there's a tide note there, and I want a dot. So I'm just going to carry on, and Dorico is going to rewrite that for me <laughs> and also move the screen. But he's going to rewrite that for me automatically, so I've not had to change anything on there. Uh, because now there's a note at the end of the bar it knows to to write that differently. I could add these accents if I want to. Let's just turn off this side panel. Uh, so I could add these accents if I want to. Um, so we've got those, of course, as uh, shortcuts on the on the left uh, of the screen over here. They're over here, and they correspond to the keypad. So if you wanted to add some of those, I'm going to do these. For some reason, I'm going to do them backwards. So I don't 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 ask. I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's do so you can add the accent so you can, I can carry on doing those so so now that's how you could do that's one way of doing some of these uh these rhythms and these accents uh in one of the files i was sent um there was also things like a bass drum underneath i don't believe it it's february and the ice cream van just went past Right, whoever had money on nine minutes past four, well done. Um, yeah, ice cream van. Well, it, it has been very warm in the UK this week, but yeah, anyway. Um, I can't quite believe that. Uh, right, so I'm going to enter some bass drum notes. So I'm going to say, for example, I want to show a different rhythm underneath because some of the parts uh, I uh, was sent have, uh, they're kind of indicating different instruments or different brass, you know, different parts of the brass section or anything else. Um, like this. So they've got some of them uh, are up here and some of them are down here. So this will effectively now play, you know, it, it's still a drum kit. Um, which may, ma may matter, it might not matter. What did annoy me was, for example, these um, slashes and you click on them, click, uh, and maybe you don't want them to. So I will turn that off in a second. Um, also, it may be that, for example, these these notes here, you don't want them to be that on the kick drum space, you want them to be even lower on the staff. So another example I was sent, I'm just going to see if I can find it. Sorry, bear with me two seconds. I've got a lot of files open. Is uh, this one here. And in this one, not only has it got notes above up here, it's also got these notes down here. So it's indicating kind of, you know, um, different 
uh, sections playing things at that point. So if you wanted to do that, you could do it in a very similar way. You can go into here, edit the percussion kit, and you could add, you know, let's say we'll add another kick drum if I could type. Uh, let's say we'll have a very low, it doesn't really matter. We'll have a very low one this time. It's going to put it here, and we can drag that below the stuff down here. It will already have the right note head, so let's apply that. We can just check it will already have the right note head, so we won't need to change anything. Um, so now here you've got uh, these notes, and if you wanted to, you can move these. Now in a drum kit, I have noticed, for example, you can't use select more to select more of this kit if you want to change things. Um, you can do things like uh, drag out a, a box like this if it's just one small section. I know some people are thinking, well, that's not might not be what I want, but you know, in in some cases, for example, here that's going to work enough. You're going to have potentially these problems where they're in they might want to be in different um, stem directions. So make sure when you're adding your instruments that the new ones that you add have the right stem direction. So that one wants to be down, whereas opposed to the ride symbol that was up. So that will separate those out for us nicely. Um, you could also uh, remember, of course, that in Dorico, if you go into the layout options for players, um, then there's a percussion section, as long as you've got a percussion instrument. And you can choose that your drum kit could be, for example, shown as single line instruments or a grid. So if we do that, I'll just move this dialog out of the way for a second. Um, then your drum kit here is now all written out as a uh, uh, as all individual instruments. Um, I suppose if anybody's wondering why the ride symbol is down here with the kick drum, it's the order we created them in. So and you can change that kind of thing too. When you edit your percussion kit, we've just been editing this section, which is the five line staff, but there is also the grid editing options and the single line instrument editing options. So if you wanted this ride symbol to be higher up, you can use these buttons and you can move them. Actually, in this case, because they're both showing me that they're, they're not really instruments as such, they're just showing me the cues, you can leave them down here. But this also makes it very easy now to select just one individual instrument instead of any of the other ones. So what I'm trying to also highlight is that you don't ever need to filter out a particular note in or a particular instrument in a drum kit in Dorico, because it's effectively it's its own instrument here. You can show it in this view. And you can edit it if you need to. So let's so say they all need the same accents, for example, or you know that you want to move them all or copy them all to somewhere else or repeat them all. Then you can do that very easily in this mode. And then at any point when you go back to your layout options here, you can switch back to a five line staff and Dorico will um, put that all back together again for you. Uh, no problem. So that was one option for showing some of these um, cues options and, and things like that. So we've got these slashes. Oh, slashes. I keep saying I'll, I'll stop them playing back. Um, here's an option for not making them play. So in play mode, if I go over here to my little cog for VST instruments, then it says that my slashes without stems um, is on it is actually on its own port and channel and, and assigned instrument and everything else. So you could say, well, actually, I'll you know assign it somewhere else or I'll do something else with it. But it's using the XG percussion map. Um, so let's have a quick look in there as well. So there's kind of multiple ways you could do this kind of thing. In fact, if you have a look in the mixer, um, you'll see the slashes have their own uh, channel. So if you want to, you can just mute that. And you know, if you don't want them to ever click or do anything else, you can mute that. Um, also, if you have a look in play and percussion maps, I've been doing a lot of percussion maps recently because we're starting to look at uh, marching percussion. I'm not going to look at any of that today. Um, but we've started to look at marching percussion. Normally for the Yamaha XG kit, you'd see this, which is all of the instruments uh, that are, are mapped to or available uh, to the drum kit, because they're all the instruments that are available in the XG kit. If I do show all, just put MIDI note zero, because I know it doesn't play anything, I could say, I want to make this the slashes. So the instrument here, if I just say, I want slash, it was the slash without stems, and you can make that do the natural sound for that is MIDI note zero. If I press apply, there you go. So now even when you click on it, uh, when you select it, it's not gonna click or do anything annoying because you've changed the way that's gonna play and it's playing back to nothing. Um, I will do probably a lot more on percussion mapping of instruments and note heads and those kind of things uh, in, a, in a later session. Uh, but one thing I did want to also say is that, for example, if you are using the same line or space that's already mapped, so for example, here is the hi-hats. If I was mapping something onto the hi-hats here, 
um, then what you're getting by default, of course, here is if I'm going to do half a bar and I can do the other half a different way, you're getting the standard note head. What you can also do, instead of creating an entire new instrument uh, on that row, you can edit the hi hat and it's got a natural note head. You can add in, and this is what I'd added before, I just added an accent. It doesn't matter, uh, a playing technique you're not using. It's using the standard note head, the, the default note head, so that's fine. So now when I'm editing uh, editing here and I go up to my hi-hat, um, I can press um, Alt and Up, Alt, uh, just, just Alt on my keyboard and Up, and I get hi-hat accents. So now when I enter notes on there, they are standard note heads. Uh, so now on the same uh, line or space, I've got those. Now, that might not be your preference. You could add effectively two hi-hats or put that ride symbol down there or you know, there, there's all sorts of options here as to what you want to do. But all I'm trying to say is, you know, there's no one way of writing these parts. So here's a multitude of options of things you want to do. So this is another option of editing the hi hand, adding another note head into that, if that would be uh, useful to you. Um, there also now this one. Um, don't tell Daniel; he probably won't like this. Um, this one. Uh, is an option because people have mentioned cues before. So if you've got, for example, a piano part or a trumpet part or anything else, and you want to cue it into the drum part, you'll know that um, you can, uh, for example, in this trumpet part, if I wanted to, let's see, if, it, if they didn't have any notes, that would help, wouldn't it? Uh, if I wanted to make a cue, I could select these and I can say cue the piano A, for example, and it will create this little cue and I'll get cue notes in the trumpet part. If you haven't seen that before, see one of the other videos on YouTube. Um, oh no, I've just noticed Daniel's on. Sorry. Anyway, um, you can't do that in the drum part. If you select the drum part down here and do shift U and you start typing, nothing happens. You cannot create a cue down here. Um, that's partly because there's there's some things that, that we need to do on that. However, there is a little trick if you want it. If you created a cue somewhere else and this is not officially supported and if it causes you problems, don't come crying to me. But anyway, for now, if you select this uh, this signpost here and copy it down here, I just alt click down to down to here, just as Q in the drum part. So when I switch to the drum part here, then you'll see you get this, which is well, this is because it's a, they're all chords from the piano and it doesn't know what to do with those, so it's put them all on the center line. So let's use our properties panel down here and say that this is a rhythmic Q, which will instantly get rid of all the extra notes and put them up here. Uh, I also could say that the start text is maybe this is the trumpets. Uh, line, for example. Um, so now I've got the notes here. Now, the disadvantage is that they um, are smaller than these ones. You wouldn't want to use the engraving uh, options, partly if you're using elements, then it doesn't exist. Um, partly, although there is a cue size in here in Pro in the engraving options, that's going to change all of them for all of the parts. So you might end up doing things with the scale or custom scale down here if you want them to be the same size as something else you've done. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using this as well as this option. I'd probably stick to one or the other. But in some cases, this might be a, a neat little option. There's also a distance control over here if you need it. So if you want to set the distance, you won't get any ledger lines with these notes, um, but you can set a, a distance for the rhythmic cue uh, if you should you want them. So I just thought, because I know that some people have mentioned this one on, on Facebook and people have gone, oh, really? No, it's not an officially supported feature or anything else, but sometimes it's it's useful. Um, two people have said busted and somebody said, don't come crying to me on the forum. Yes. So, um, you know, like I said, it's not officially supported. Hopefully one day, you know, there's, there's a few things with drum parts that I'd, you know, I'd love to add and I'm sure the team would love to add. Um, I'm just telling you what's available today. Um, today is the 27th of February 2019 and we're on version 2.2.10. So if you're watching this video in the future, maybe this doesn't apply, but it does today. Uh, so I just thought I'd mention that as, as another little option. And because also on that one, you can use them above ryth rhythmic slashes because the uh, the rhythmic slashes, excuse me, <coughs> the rhythmic slashes don't, you, won't, you can't put other notes in with those because it will replace them which is useful when you want to hide things in there sometimes, um, but it, it does work with this uh, little cues option. Um, also, actually, if you want to cues and you're in the full score, um, then you'll need to turn those on as well. So in players cues, you'll need to tick show cues. And when you press apply, then you'll also show the cues in the score. Should you want that, you, you might, you might not, you might just want it in the parts. Um, <laughs> somebody's just add, is any update coming out soon again? 
we did one this month already. <laughs> it was at the beginning of the month. And the previous uh, Discover session uh, showed lots of the things in there, which was, uh, so that's 2.2.10. So uh, no, there's not another one coming out right now, unfortunately. Um, uh, was there anything else in this file that I have forgotten or anything else? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I wanted to show uh, something here. Ah, yes, this is where my snare drum was the other way up. Uh, let me put that back. So when you, because uh, I don't want these tied notes at the bottom and the snares want to be stems up. So they change that just as a recap. You can ch uh, choose your snare drum, say stems up, please. Oh, I can't see the apply button. There we go. We're trying to do this, all this on one screen. There we go. So that sorts out the, uh, the, the snare drums down there. That's why it was like that. Um, now this repeat bar symbol. Here, I've done exactly the same as I had before with those hi-hats. And now, actually, I can change these to high-hand accent um, options, if should I want to, um, because I put those in as a, as a different note head option. Um, but this repeat bar symbol, while it is very useful and means that this will play back, so you'll get this um, slightly random riff I wrote, uh, and it will continue playing that back, but this will not move. So if you need this... You know, for some reason, these notes were, were higher up as a snare or a tom or anything else. They could collide. At the moment, there is no way of moving that. So if you use that, just be aware of that one. If you're using slashes, you can. So, uh, for example, these slashes here, if for some reason they were getting in the way of something, there is a slash position, and you can move these in the properties panel down here. So if you need to move them up or down or out of the way of something else, you can do. Uh, also, if you've done these type of slashes, um, then again, there's a, a slash position option for these as well. So you can move these individually or or uh, en masse if you if you need to. So sometimes when you need the slashes to still be there, but there's a fill or something that's also entered and you want to move the slashes out of the way, then that is possible uh, as well. But with the repeat bar symbol, which is down here, uh, you can't move that one. So be careful because uh, you won't be able to move it anywhere else. Um, let me just have a look at the comments to see if there's anything in here. Um, I like the fact that people are guessing when uh, an, an update might come out. Use the flip with 2.2.10. I haven't used the flip on any of these things. Don't use them in drum parts because you don't need to flip them. You just set the stem direction when you're editing the, the instrument. Is that what you meant? I'm not sure. Um, Somebody's what? Yeah, okay. Uh, how do the parts look? Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. I shouldn't have read the comments. Uh, anyway, uh, so if there's any questions on any of that, then let me know. Um, oh, yes. And if you need them because it was in a part that I looked at earlier, if you need any things like falls or anything like that. So in this one here, I think the rhythm that they'd entered was. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was a different note head. And they'd put a fall on it. Yes, you can do those. So the, the jazz falls and things like that, you can you can add those if you need to uh, for the drum parts, which presumably means he falls off a hi-hat. No, he probably does a, adds a fill or something else at that point, because all of this notation is kind of direction rather than exact, isn't it, for what you're playing? So let's move on. The next option that we'll look at, let's look at this one. So uh, this is a part I was sent uh, by Nikos. Thank you very much. And the question actually initially was, how do I delete page three? And you think, well, that must be quite simple. Here's page one, here's page two, here's page three. Oh, yes, and page three onwards. Uh, and there's more. There, there, there are more pages and more pages. And actually, all he wanted was the first two over here. So um, I've just edited this slightly, and I've put some notes in so we can see. There's a note here and a note here. So I've put A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, you can tell it was different. So I had a look at this file to say, right, we want we want to remove page three onwards. Let's um, let's find out what's going on. Ah, yes, okay. So we've got multiple flows, fair enough. And in engrave mode, we've got some overrides happening here, and then we want to delete from page three onwards. So you can't just say, well, here, here's here's delete page three, delete it or something. But you need to. We need to look at. So, how did page three get here in the first place? Uh, and the reason page three is here is that if you see on this page, we have uh, lots of frames here, but there's an M, which means it's following these master pages, and there's a whole bunch of L's. 
and the L's are specifically referencing particular uh, flows. So here, it's you know, it, they're all referencing individual ones. So these are all of these layout ones instead of the master ones. And here, it's the masters continuing. So what Dorico is doing here is it's saying, yes, you might want to make this layout, but I don't want to lose your music. I don't want to, and I don't know if you've already used it, so I don't want to lose it, so I've put it on these other pages for you. Well, now you, you don't want those. So actually, this is fixable, uh, but I want to kind of show how you can, why you'd have got into this situation, because it's completely understandable um, how, you, how you get into this situation. So let's just say, for example, uh, I start a new full score, and I will call it new full score, so that we know it's uh, the one that wasn't originally in the file. Um, and in this new full score, it's automatically added all of the flows and the, the, the piano over there. So this would have been the default. This would have been, you know, some point before um, the, what Dorico would have done for you by default. You've made a bunch of flows and they all contain music like this. And what you want is all of the music to kind of flow down these two pages instead. So in layout options, uh, you would need to do things like in flows, say that they're allowed on the on an existing page. So if we apply that, so let's apply these one at a time, you would have got this. If you don't want the flow headings, so if I say never, then we can do this. And now we this is the uh, the layout we've got. Okay, so actually it's it's looking relatively uh, similar to what we want, and we don't have any extra pages because this is using the master um, frames and we have all the music in the places we wanted them. However, they actually want to put some text in the middle. So let's say we need to make some space for all of the text and things in the middle and how, how you would do this. Uh, yes, as somebody's pointed out, this isn't something you can't do in Elements because you'll need engraved mode. Um, if I click on this uh, option here and move this up a bit, so there's the, the, first, um, uh, the first section there. And then let's say we wanted a text box underneath it. Um, just so we can tell where it is. Let's put a border on it. And then we'll do another box. Now, when you create this box and I let go of the mouse, it will make an L here. And this is why you can get into the situation because that's what Dorico defaults to. Uh, defaults to, okay, you want to add something in there. Okay, uh, it, it's an L, it's a layout uh, option you've chosen. But we want to go back to master. So I'm going to go back to MA. Uh, and in a lot of files, you'd only have MA. You wouldn't have these other Ms. You just have an MA you can choose. So now who we've got A, look, and here we've got B. This is why I labeled them so we can tell which ones they are. Actually, that could even be a bit smaller if we wanted to be. And then if I make another text box underneath, again, we can add a border just so we know it's there because I'm not adding text into it. And then we make another one under here. And we can make this one also an M. This is the problem. Uh, in fact, if I just go back for a second, if that, if we, if that was LC, then you see it's here, it's now reusing the same thing. And that's why you get duplicate information. And it also sits over here. The moment I make this an MA, this item over here will fit into this box like that. So now this is reducing the number in, in this list here. So you see, I've still not got page three. I've, I've, I've never ended up with page three. Um, uh, and it's it, that's why the question isn't, how do I delete page three? It's kind of, well, don't make page three in the first place, if you see what I mean. Um, and I'm not saying it's through any fault of the, the, the person who was making this file. It's because, like I said, when you create a, a, a music frame in here, Dorico will default to using an L, a, a layout frame, and that might not be what you want. Um, in this particular example, I'd also say, actually, we might want to go into here and, and reduce a few things. So either the, the, the space size or actually possibly just the music frame margins. Um, if there's the music frame margin top and bottom is this gap here, if I just, uh, this would be better, wouldn't it? Uh, just above here and the music frame at the bottom here. So if we just reduce these a bit, let's just make a bit more space. Apply, close that. So I've got more, uh, a bit more space. I've got rid of that space at the top. So actually I can make these smaller and I can move these boxes around if I want to and, and fit more on a page that way. So that, that's a, you know, when you're working with frames, it might be a, a useful little option. Now, if you're doing lots of these type of layouts, then I would do uh, similar to what uh, the original um, question was. They've created down here some master pages, one based on first and one based on first, but without a title at the top. But again, when you've created these and you've got an M here, 
these don't need to be MA and MJ and ML. If the music's just continuously flowing from one box to the other, these can all still stay as MA. So if I move these back to the MAs, and if this is where if you want a consistent layout over several pages, definitely make a, a, a master page like this. So now they're all MAs, and I'm going to do the same in this one here because um, they also need to be M-A, M-A, M-A. Copy left to right, apply, close. And now when you want to use these pages, so you'll see my boxes disappear in a second, I can click up here on the right-hand side. Um, you can remove the overrides if you want to. So let's say, yeah, let's remove all the overrides to be back where we were. And we want to say, I would like to insert a master page change. I'm going to start with based on first, uh, not created by me. Current page only is fine. Uh, see, so now that's applied. And on the page two, maybe page two onwards, if we insert a master page change, we can say based on first without the title at the top. Good name. From this page onwards, go. So now you've got the, the, the layout that you wanted and the music is continuing. So we see A, B, C, D, E, and we don't have page three or any other pages afterwards. So um, so those were all there because they were duplicates because of all the L frames that were being used. Um, but this is now using just M. In fact, it's only using the MA frame. Uh, and of course, you can resort these orders. So if, if all of these musical examples stay the same, and let's say you wanted this one at the beginning, then in setup mode, you can take this one and you can drag it to the beginning. So it sits here. So because it's just using MA and the music is just starting here and then flowing into all of the other boxes, then, uh, th then that should be much better and you can sort the orders. So hopefully that helps with that particular one. I'm just going to check because there's a lot of confusion over how these kind of layout things work. And it's understandable because you've, well, uh, Dorico's really introduced these concepts and it's quite different to how you might work with, with layouts in other notation programs. So uh, I'm just going to check the comments for a second and see if I have uh, missed anything. Oh, I have to scroll back a bit, sorry. Um... <clears throat> yes, with the A, uh, you know, when it says MA or LA or something, um, then, uh, and L is for layout, then the, um, the, the letter doesn't matter, you know, we're after it, MA, MB, as long as they're all the same, it doesn't matter whether it's MA or MB. Um, and Dorico just makes a new one. So if you make a new master frame afterwards, then it calls it MB, and then it calls it MC, and keeps going. Um, they're, they're only a, a reference marker for, um, so that when you want the music to flow from MA into the next MA, you just pick the same letter, or from MJ into MJ, it, it doesn't matter. Um, let me just continue the comments for a second. Ah, yes, Danzol just answered the same question. Yes, yeah, sometimes you'll end up with LG or you know or something else, so that's great. Um, when there's an MA, it skips to MJ, ML. It doesn't really matter if it skips to MJ or ML. It's often because if you've created another master frame in the file at some point, it'll have given that the next letter, and then you've created another one, it's, and then you might have gone and deleted one of the previous ones. You might have deleted MB, MC, and MD. The next one you make will be ME just because it's made the next letter, so it, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, Some, uh, somebody said, I wish it was M1, M2, M3. Yeah, uh, it really doesn't really make any difference. Um, uh, and copy and pasting frames. No, you can't kind of copy and paste um, frames. So if when you've got kind of text in a frame, you can't flow text between frames either at the moment. Um, also, we don't have alignment tools for kind of lining vertically and horizontally yet. I'm sure all these things will be coming one day, but uh, not at the moment. There, There is an option, actually, um, when you're right-clicking on some of these, you will get some different options. So, for example, with some of the options that you might have selected, you can then say, copy the selected frames to selected pages. And you can do things like that when you've, when you've got a frame selected. Uh, so that might help. And there's also some swap and some move uh, functions, because the frames are on that particular page. Um, so if you've added a text text item, 
for example, uh, possibly as a manual thing on the page and then it needs to move to the next page, then that's what you'll need to use. You'll need to use this option to move those frames over to a, another page. Uh, if the music's got bigger. Um, oh yes, I think, I think I got there just before Daniel also answered the question in the comments, but probably at the same time. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and Daniel, let me know if I'm um, talking nonsense or said anything daft or missed anything. Thank you. Um, right, so I'm going to move on because uh, it, I've been nattering for a while. Thank you if you're still on and uh, you can always come back and watch these things later. The next question is about percussion uh, and this is the last question. It's about uh, percussion labeling because lots of people wanted different options again. So the do option that somebody wanted, here's a PDF. Brilliant, it says. Um, the option, uh, I don't know what created this PDF, which uh, music software, I have no idea, but they wanted this label here. So I'm um, highlighting this percussion one label um, where it's, why have I lost my, uh, hmm, interesting, lost the effects. Doesn't matter. So this percussion one label, which says xylophone, glockenspiel, chimes, bass drum, and smaller text underneath on the first page of the score. Uh, and they wanted to create that. And I also then thought, mm, once you've done that, how would it affect the part and how that would display as well? And would you want something similar on the parts? And I thought, oh, we'll look at those because there's labeling instruments and sometimes percussion things are, are, are a bit different. So I'm not saying, oh, here we go. Uh, Robert says it was Sibelius, great. And Daniel says I'm talking no more nonsense than normal. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, so I'm not saying that this is the option everybody wants, but it's the option that Robert wanted, and I thought we'd have a look at it. Um, and we can cover some other options while we're doing it. So this is a mostly blank file. There's lots and lots of blank bars. I've had some instruments just so that I could add in a percussion. All I've done so far into this file is add these percussion instruments. So I've created one percussion player and I've given him a bunch of instruments with, you, with this plus button, or shift I, actually is what I used. And I've added a xylophone, a glockenspiel, chimes, and a bass drum. I've then added in, in fact, if I just switch to gallery view for a minute, then you'll see here are the instruments, xylophone, glockenspiel, chimes, and bass drum. And I've added in a few notes in relatively randomly. I kind of copied the odd bar, or literally not many, okay. I copied a few bars, well, about four, out of the, uh, the file that Robert sent me as an example. So what we want to achieve is the uh, in-page view, this not to say xylophone. Uh, and I also thought it was worth looking at the part. So here is the part. This is the default of what uh, Dorico is going to do, do for you. And, uh, and now we can look at changing it. So in fact, let me just check, have I already done? No, no, this is exactly, I think, where we want to be. And the parts are also, yes, right. So. Here's a few options. In setup mode, here's things you don't want to do. If you double click on this name up here and say, I want to call that perk or perk one or percussion or something, what that will do is it, it will change this label here, which is the player. It will also change this label here, which is the layout. You'll notice it's changed here and it will have changed in the, the list here. Oops, interesting. Thank you, Mac. Uh, and it, you see the percussions, uh, percussion options here. And if I select it here, it also just says percussion, which is sometimes what you want, sometimes, because now everything says percussion, um, apart from this label here. Um, and you might want to label the, you know, we, it's labeling the instrument changes for us. So in some cases, that's what people want. I'm going to undo that because it's not what I want in this case. Um, Another option is if you just change this one over here, you can say percussion and change this one over here, which hasn't changed this one because it won't change the players. It will change this one and it will change this top option. I think it's percussion one actually, but, but there you go. Um, so you can, for example, say that this is percussion. You could say that it has a xylophone and a glockenspiel and anything else in here, for example which will start changing this one. It will start changing this one, but it's still not changing the full score for us. Um, so that's you know a, an option. But uh, again, it's still not necessarily the preferred option that I'd use. So I'm going to um, undo that one. What I'm going to do is to get the options exactly as Robert wanted them here, I'm going to take this first instrument, which is a xylophone, and I'm going to edit its name, only the full name. So I'm going to say in here, that this is percussion one, because actually there's four percussionists in the end in this file. And it, there's a xylophone and a, I'm going to have to enter these myself. So there's a glockenspiel. Now this is cheating, I'm sure somebody will tell me. And a bass drum. 
and I can select those and I can make those a bit smaller. For example, uh, I'm going to leave this label for the short name um, and enter that. So now I've got percussion one and these options here. Um, you can left align them if you want to. Um, I've been asked those that recently a couple of times. So yes, you can left align them if you want to. So now this name hasn't changed up here, the player name, but this one has. When you switch the percussion part, this is showing me just percussion because it's using the layout label. This is the layouts over here. It's using the layouts label. So what you can do uh, is, and I wouldn't edit this part because we've got four percussionists. So I don't want to have to do this four times. I also wouldn't edit this master page because that will affect all of the instruments in the score. So I would probably, in this case, make a new, and I'm going to call it percussion because it's a um, a part option, a new percussion one, which is based on first, but is a custom one. So what it's going to do when I press OK is it makes a copy of first. Down here, I've got one called percussion. So now I can double click on percussion. I can edit this layout name. So in this case, I'm going to make this shorter. I'm going to make this box a bit bigger like this. And I'm going to um, edit this. And I'm going to use and now this came up actually in one of uh, Anthony's videos, I think, in the last week or so. Uh, I'm going to use player list. Now, normally on the score, this will give you a list of all of the players that are, that are in the score. But um, this one is not going to do that this time. So I'm going to reduce the size just of the player list. It will say layout name. Layout name was the option on the right hand side in setup mode. Let's copy that, apply that close so it's going to use layout name and then it's going to use the uh the playlist now this isn't displaying right because when you select this one here it's still using first so i need to say this one do a master page change and say use percussion please there we go so now it says percussion or percussion one or whatever you wanted to say and it says xylophone glockenspiel chimes and bass drum so i've got that bit of the labeling done and on the full score here I've also got this bit of the labeling done that I wanted. And this is using uh, this uh, edit in here. And then when you get to other pages, for example, here, it will carry on with the, the, the labeling, depending on which instrument is changing uh, at that time, which is also um, what was in the, the file I was sent. So that's given me the, the full name here changed. Um, I can tell what's going on because oh, actually, just I know we're going to have four percussionists. And they, I'll manually label it percussion one. So I know this is the percussion one part. I know which instruments are in it on the part. I know which instruments are in it in the full score. So was that, you know, I think hopefully that, that gives you all the options you want. You can see from the players what they're still holding, what they're still using. Um, you've got all the, the, the labels correct. And also, I just wanted to highlight that this list here with the players and the way you edit these, and this is the editing the individual instrument name that the player is holding, is often different to the layouts name, with the layouts are down this right-hand side. And it's when you're editing up here, I'm sure you'll come into here and you'll double click on this and go, oh, oh, sorry, not that one. You, you'll double click and your layout name will be up here. Don't change those because you want to change it for all of the the players so in engrave mode again you can't do this in elements um you need to be changing normally it's the first page and in my case i've created a new one um which is the percussion one so when i double click on this this is what i'm editing because then it will apply uh, in multiple multiple times in this piece because i'm going to have four percussionists and i can use player list to show me actually what's going on in this particular part and uh, on what they're playing at this point so hopefully that um that shows you all of the, the, the things that you need for that one. So um, any questions on that one? Single line staff in bar nine to 11. This one here, um, that happened automatically because it's a bass drum. So um, let's just go back here to look at all of our, all of our instruments. Um, when I've created the instruments, all I've done is just say I want a bass drum, and a bass drum is a single line by default uh, in this particular case. Um, so it's doing that automatically. And all you're doing is you're writing. So if I said, for example, this bass drum also appears after the chimes over here uh, a bit, then when you get to the part, it will do these kind of changes for you automatically. You're not changing to a single line staff anywhere. You're just writing for bass drum, and it's sorting the changes out for you. 
Uh, and on the score, when you're still in back in page view, then it's also doing the same. So it's, it's doing that change to bass drum uh, automatically for you. There's, there's no kind of single line or five line staff changes that you need to do. Um, now, there are some, um, why do you not get all the players in the score? Oh, was, that was because, um, you mean these, these players, that's because in page view, it's only showing me the, that particular instrument. Now that's because it's showing, it's showing me all the players and I've got one player with all, holding all of these instruments. If you wanted to show a separate bass drum or a separate something else, what else would they have? Timbales or something. If you add a new player in here, if I said I'm going to have timbales as a new uh, a player just with timbales here, then that would be uh, that would appear here. But also, then when you go to galley view, you see the expanded, fully expanded, everything, all of the instruments that you can then write for, um, uh, and Oracle will collapse those automatically. The same applies, for example, to this uh, soprano saxophone here. If this was soprano saxophone and alto saxophone, because they were doubling, um, then in galley view, you would see both instruments. But in uh, when you go up to here and go to page view, you'd only see the instrument that's, that's playing at the time. So you'd only see one of the instruments, as we're seeing with the percussion there. Hopefully, that helps. Do, uh, oh, that one's been answered. So um, A question, could you switch to a five line stuff with a bass drum and a snare, for example, how would that work in combination with mallet percussion where there are one instrument as opposed to five, two on a five line stuff? You can, and actually I did that back in Dorico 1.1, 1 .1, I think, about a year ago, there's a video on that. Um, Andrew, I'll find you that video because I did uh, two percussion examples then, one showing a switch from five line to single and one showing it was always a five line staff but changing instruments and, and labeling on there so i'll i'll find you that video uh, and i think from your username uh, I, I can ping, probably ping you that via facebook if that's okay um instead of going through it again today because uh, i've rattled on uh, a bit longer than i expected so sorry about that um so also, I mentioned I'm looking at the moment at some uh, marching band stuff, which is, again, very different percussion. Um, for example, marching tenors with six all on one five line staff and uh, snare drum and, you know, and bass drum options and the playback and potentially VDL and, and things like that as well. Um, so I will look at that hopefully in a, another session. If you do want to know any more about that, um, then um, drop me an email and um, as and when I've got various bits up and running or if I've got any questions, then uh, then I can send you those. And thank you for the people who have already got in touch. Um, I'm working through some of those things at the moment um, with some other people so we can come up, come up with a marching band template, but uh, it, it's not ready to, for me to show you today. Maybe next month, maybe we'll do that. So the next session that for this uh, Discover Dorico will be Wednesday the 27th of March at the usual time. Uh, so four o'clock in the UK, and if you're not in the UK, it's a different time. Um, if you subscribe to our channel, um, so hit the subscribe button and then ring my bell or the notify button. It's the um, YouTube notification bell. Thank you, Anita Ward. Um, then uh, you'll also be notified when these videos are, uh, are going live and, and when they're available. Um, but yes, uh, the next session will be Wednesday, the 27th of March. If you have any questions, uh, and you, there's any examples that you think I'd really like to be able to do this and maybe it will be useful in one of these sessions or you just have a question, then email discoverdorico at steinberg.de uh, and I'll do my best to help. Of course, our support channels are there as well. So we, we have a, a great support team and you can contact them. You can come and find us on Facebook and our forum as well if you've got questions there. Um, I will answer some of the questions on the comments now. So I'm going to finish this session. Um, and I'll be on the comments. So if you've got any further questions, then uh, you can let us know on here just for a very brief time. The live chat will only last for a little while. So if your question doesn't get answered, please get in touch via uh, email, Facebook, um, comments, forum or anything else. So thank you for watching and uh, see you next month. Thank you.